Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. This comment's from TikTok and it is in regards to a video that I did on there where I was auditing Mark Lowercase K Kishon and Christopher's grammar, where it's a document that he did that had the one by 1.9 flag on it. And then it also had another flag on it, but it was written completely in plain, simple English, i.e. adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar. It was complete fictitious conveyance of grammar. And this individual, Sean Pace, had asked me, what do you think of Mark Lowercase K? And I posted that video, that little clip, as a response. And then Sean then said, thanks for this response. I have been supporting him, Mark Lowercase K, because I just wanted to put energy into changing the situation in this world. Now, I can understand the logic behind that, the mentality, the psychology that goes into that. However, you kind of kind of go a little bit deeper, right? Because if you're supporting a guy like Mark, Mark Lowercase K, um, you're not really putting energy into changing the situation in the world because what situation in the world needs changing? Really, I mean, I think my own personal stance is that the world is the way it is, the way it's supposed to be. The world can take care of the world. What I have to worry about is me, all right? I have to take care of me and those around me. Um, that, that's what I care about. Because once you do that for yourself, then it exponentially spreads out in waves. And then perhaps other people see, wow, he's doing this with correct sentence structure. I want to learn that. And then they learn it. And then it exponentially increases in waves and positive performance. And that's how you can do what this guy's talking about. However, just throwing money at Mark Lowercase K isn't really going to do anything except fill up Mark's pockets and, uh, you know, I guess help him keep a roof over his head, help him do the things that he wants to do. But as far as the world goes... I don't know what the effect that would have on the world. Because first of all, did the world ask to be changed? Is the world okay with that? Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a very subtle psychological condition of state where you got to be careful not to trespass on the world. And I do highly recommend you parsing the word world to get the deeper meanings of what I'm trying to convey, Sean Pace. Thank you for the comment. And... You know, of course, you're more than welcome to come over to YouTube and check out the 600 plus videos here. Next comment comes from longtime viewer Rube Star. And they said, for the heat of the sun is with great heat at the time of noon. How did I do? Guess I'll watch and find out. Well, if you watched, then you certainly did find out that what you wrote there is not correct sentence structure. Um, started off okay with for the heat of the sun. And then you put your verb in is, and then with great heat. I've never seen great used as a lodial. That's an interesting lodial. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying I've never seen it done. But then you put at the time. Now, at 
is not a correct positional. There are four positionals. Four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by. Of is congruent with with. Four is cause. Of is concern. With is possessive. By is authority. What is that? How's that fit in? And then at the end, you have of noon. There's no lodial between of and noon. So that definitely throws it into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. And you must end on an authority. You would never end on an of the or a with the. So hope that helps. Next comment comes from the Learner 1000 and they say, Dear Jason, as I'm studying CSS PSG on your channel, I added syntax to your example and trust this is also correct. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the witness, with the sun of the heat, with the location of the noon, 1200 hour Eastern Standard, June, oh, I see what they did here. They copy and pasted the majority of the sentence that I used in the video, but then they started putting their own stuff in. And once they started putting their own stuff in, it goes south. It's not correct. The compound facts are not hyphenated. There's two verbs. There can only be one verb per correct sentence structure. There would never be two verbs, only one verb of thinking. And also, not only does it not end on an authority, but the Learner 1000 is using my name. So that's a huge egregious trespass. I did not give them permission to make a claim for me. Because I'm certainly not viewing the sun from New York on June 4th. That's a lie. That's a complete, uh, what is it? Changes, modification, modification is perjury. The Learner 1000 has perjured themselves on this channel. I'm just giving you a hard time, the Learner 1000. But again, you know, if you are serious about learning this grammar, then you will contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and sign up for a workshop. <clears throat> Otherwise, um, I do invite you to study the rest of the videos on the channel, over 600 of them, so that uh, you can get a, a better idea of how to create a correct sentence structure. And I do suggest that you study the basics. And the video that you're commenting on is definitely a good place to start. Thanks for the valiant attempt. Remember and student colon isaac hyphen thomas colon seeley says for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the cognizance of the syntax rule performance with the broad specifics of the thorough lecture with the cognition by the claimant's knowledge for the gratitude and then member sean uh colon sean hyphen daniel colon taylor says you ended with for the now Okay, a couple things here real quick the reason why the main reason i published this one like this is because you have to meticulously, when you're doing forensics, look at things very closely, all right, to make sure you're not making any mistakes. You can't just skim over something with correct sentence structure. There's really no half-assing it. And I know I've said this to Sean before. I've definitely said this before to him in one form or another because I'm beginning to become familiar with, with him and the way he navigates and things like that. If, if one thing I could recommend to Sean is to just be more careful and more meticulous with your forensics when you're reading things. Make sure you thoroughly read it. Get it all. That's Those are simple judge mechanics. you got to get the whole story. Because if you notice, there's a period after claimant's knowledge, which means that's a full stop. That's one correct sentence structure stopped. And by the way, Isaac's correct sentence structure is very well done. It's uh, the positional sequencing is correct, which is the first thing I look at. And then they just said for the gratitude, which could easily have been written colon gratitude, which also is correct. So there's nothing wrong with this sentence. Now, the way that Sean worded, you ended with for the. Like, you could just as easily put a period at the end of his plain English sentence. You ended with for the, period. And it would be a statement. But they put a question mark. I ask that my viewers, especially the members who, you know, 
implies that they have a little more invested than everyone else. Be more careful with the way you convey things. Be more clear. Be more concise. If you're going to ask a question, ask a question. Like, for example, Sean could have said, why did you end with for the gratitude? Something like that. Or isn't ending with for the incorrect? Question mark. Now it's a, a real question in plain English. Instead of you ended with for the. That's like a statement, a question, who knows what it is. I know little things, but it's the eye for detail that's going to add to your success, Sean, when you do decide to move forward with workshops or, or however you want to learn this. Uh, when you decide to get serious about it, it, it will benefit you greatly to have that meticulous sort of mindset. So now I want to look at Isaac's sentence real quick. And I have a couple questions. Like uh, the first question is, what is a thorough hyphen lecture? What is your correct sentence structure finite mean for thorough? Also, the compound fact broad hyphen specifics. Like when I think of broad, it's like a broadcast, right? It's a wide thing, sweeping thing. And then specifics is like... <clears throat> It's like narrowing it down. This is specifics. This is a B. Very specific about it. All right? So when you put broad next to specifics, that seems like an oxymoron to me. It seems like it. That's why I'm asking you, Isaac, what is your correct sentence structure finite mean for broad? And what is your correct sentence structure finite mean for specifics? And what is your correct sentence structure finite mean for broad hyphen specifics? So that I can better get an understanding or cognizance of what you are trying to convey here. Thanks for the comment. Thumbs up. Next comment comes from Dylan's voice. Greetings. I agree with the claim of the sensation of the heat, but I can't verify that it's heat that the sun is emitting, emitting that I am feeling. So Dylan's basically saying if he's standing there and the sun's in the sky, and he feels heat, he can't verify that it's the sun that he's feeling heat from. Hmm. So if the sun wasn't in the sky and he was standing in the same spot and there is no heat, then what? Or if someone blocks the sun and there's no heat, then what? That's interesting. I don't have that fact verified. So we can't verify that the sun is emitting the heat. Makes more sense to me that perhaps it's the sun's rays hitting the ionosphere which creates heat. Ah. Oh. So Dylan's saying that they have more of a tangible contract with something called the ionosphere than they do with the plainly visible sun. That's interesting. Because I don't have a tangible contract with what an ionosphere is. But I do have a tangible contract with what the sun is. And if I'm standing outside at noon in my location, and it's like 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and there are other people around me, and someone says, man, the sun is hot. I think everybody can pretty much verify and certify that is the case. Okay? Even in wintertime, when the sun is, is in high noon, you can feel that heat, and you can see icicles melting and so on and so forth. But if it's cloudy, it's not there, and it's cold. So th these are some hints that I'm trying to give you, Dylan's voice, that I'm certifying things via, via first-hand knowledge. And I have no way to certify what an ionosphere is via first-hand knowledge. Maybe you do. So let's continue on here. Similar to a shuttle heating up as it falls back to Earth, the shuttle is not emitting the heat that heats up the tiles. It's the resistance on reentry creating the heat. Well, again, I mean, I have no experience with any of that. Maybe you do, Dylan's voice. Dylan's voice is basically saying that they have a t more of a tangible contract with a shuttle uh, falling back to Earth and heating up than 
the sun in the sky at noon. That's interesting because I don't have a tangible contract with a shuttle falling back to Earth or the ionosphere. So I guess we're have from two different positions here. I would have to adjust your sentence from my own personal cognizance. Yes, indeed, you certainly would. Because I don't have a tangible contract with uh, the other things that you mentioned. I just have a tangible contract with the sun. Which is why I use that example in my video. So perhaps, Dylan's voice, it would be cool if you would create a video and creating a correct sentence structure using your words like ionosphere um, with the shuttle heating up and those things. And then certifying those things as facts and showing how you certify those things as fact. As I did in the video, um, I showed how I can certify that the sun emits heat. I explained that, how I did that. And I can do that with other people standing around me as well. Can you do the same thing with ionosphere and shuttle? And this is very important with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, that you are capable, you possess the capacity to certify your facts as facts. Not just through positionals and lodials, but also through tangibility, through first-hand knowledge, preferably. Thanks for the comment. Another one from Dylan's voice. They say, if it says 1,200, doesn't that mean 1,200 hours? Yes, yes, it does. It reads as 1,200. Cool. But it can be read as 1,200. And that's how I would read it. Can we just say 12th hour if we were using 24 hours for a day? Well, we can't do that because I don't do that. I explain to you the way that I mark locations in the now space. And I use 24-hour clock. And I use 2,400 hours, 2,300 hours, 2,200 hours, so on and so forth. Um, 2,300 hours, 30 minutes. However you want to do it, that's how I do it. Now, if you want to use 12th hour, that's completely up to you, Dylan's voice. But I want to know what a TH is first. You need to show me your correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, closure, and finite mean for, for the TH on your 12. Thanks for the colon tip of the 12 with the 0, 0, at least that's precise. I think I prefer 12 colon 0, 0 instead of 1200 or 12 hour. Well, that's up to you. That's certainly up to you, Dylan's voice. Uh, but if you're going to contract with me, and we're going to agree on things, then we'd be using 1,200. Or the way that I laid it out for you in that video, and I've also laid it out in other videos, it's the most practical, efficient way of using correct sentence structure to give now space locations and be correct. I've been using that method probably since 2018. But if you have a different method, again, please feel free to outline it, maybe make a video and give closure to it so that... Uh, I mean, if it's more efficient than what I'm doing, I definitely am down to learn something new. So, balls in your court, bro. Ooh, another one from Dylan's voice. And they say, for this claim, it's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the witness, with the Earth's atmosphere of the heat, with the location of the noon, with the greatest mean, with the sensation by this witness claimant. Dylan, David, Brett Hughes. I can't verify and witness that the sun itself is directly heating us up, but I can verify that I feel heat on planet Earth within its atmosphere. Is my second sentence correct there? Well, if I'm if I'm just going to be total blunt, you know, total straight up with you, no, it is not correct. First of all, you've grafted it. No one would write a correct sentence structure like this. Uh, that is incorrect because there's so many breaks in the continuance of the evidence. You would just single space the whole thing, and it would look like a sentence from port side to starboard side. So I'm saying, for this claimant says, says knowledge. Claimant, I have to say that's a typo, because you have claimants, apostrophe S. So you have plural claimants, and then you've even pluralized that even further with claimant says, says knowledge. Of the facts is... With the claim of the witness. Okay, so it's a witness claim with the Earth's atmosphere. Particle of negation, atmosphere. That is incorrect. Um, a vacuum of a consonant, Dylan, is no contract. So atmosphere would be a no contract word. We would not use particles of negation in our facts. Of the heat with the location of the... Why is there a comma after the? That is incorrect. 
noon, and then you have 12 colon space zero zero. And um, so it's of the noon, and then 12 of the zero zero, comma, of the Greenwich mean with the sensation by this witness and claimant. And then you have the colon at the end there, which also means you're ending the sentence in an of the, not a by the. So it's very close, Dylan. It's very, very, very close. There's just some things in there that need to be addressed, especially when uh, underlining, bottom lining is not an option. You have to take that into consideration. And a good place to learn about that is in the description of my videos. I know, I know, nobody reads descriptions to videos anymore. But there's a lot of knowledge contained in the description of my videos. Those are all correct sentence structures. And I show you how to navigate a platform to, that does not allow underlining. Okay? So that's a great attempt. Um, good effort. Close but no cigar. But I applaud your effort. Awesome. I applaud anybody who has the guts to do what Dylan did here and put themselves out for criticism. Thank you very much. Next comment comes from Jeff Baird, and they say, I first started this with DWM, UR Law, Robert Mitchell, Robert Mitchell, Gene Keating. They all offered a finished boilerplate document for a donation. Spent two grand in workshops going over documents, explaining every word, providing closer, providing closer to avoid perjury. I think they mean closure. Do you offer similar workshops providing the documents up front? Jeff Baird, I have to guess that you are not um, a regular viewer of this channel and that you have not watched very many of my videos. So that's why I put this comment up here. For those of you who haven't watched my videos and haven't gone in depth studying, for me, the grammar comes first. I do not offer boilerplate documents because from my experience, they fail. They won't do you any good unless you know the grammar. I don't know how many times, how many times I have to stress this and say this. You must learn the grammar first before you can do any, before you can boil anything. You have to have ingredients to boil. This wants to know about boilerplates. In order to have a boilerplate, you have to have something to boil. You have to have the correct ingredients. You must learn the grammar. And I know for a fact that Jeff Baird uh, does not have closure on the grammar based upon his other comments. So, Jeff, if you're ever serious about learning the grammar, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And, well, there'll be more information on that at the end of the video. Now, keep in mind, if you've already emailed me, I don't know if you have or you haven't. Maybe we've done a consultation. But either which way, I don't ever remember us doing a workshop. I don't. So maybe we had a, a, a consultation. Maybe we didn't. Bottom line is I don't remember you as being one of my students. So until you're ready to get serious about it, um, there's really not much I can do. I do help people. I don't give out boilerplate uh, templates. I definitely don't do that because that's dangerous. That's anybody who does that, like you said about you are law or Gene Keating or whoever those people are. I know who the you are law is, but I don't know who the who Robert Mitchell is. Um, they're just making money. They don't care if you know or you don't know. I care if you know. If I syntax a document for you, or if I give you a boilerplate uh, template to use. It's not going to do you any good if you don't know the grammar, my man. It's not going to do you one bit of good. I just had a consultation with a guy a couple weeks ago begging me. He was begging me to help him with a case to write documents for him. He was going to pay me money to write documents for him. I mean, I could do that. I could probably make thousands and thousands of dollars doing that. But it just doesn't sit well with me because it's not going to do you any good. If you don't know the grammar, it's not going to do you any good. It's probably going to have a negative outcome from your perception. And then you're going to be pissed at me. Well, 
Jason doesn't know what he's talking about because he I paid him thousands of dollars for this document and it didn't work. Yeah, the reason why it didn't work is because who is the author of the documents? Who authored the boilerplate? I did, not you. I'm the authority of it, not you. I give it to you. You have no jurisdiction, no authority over that. You may put your name on it, but that doesn't mean shit because you didn't write it. Do you see my point now, Jeff? Please don't take this personal. You have to know the grammar so you can author it. Or you can learn the grammar to a rudimentary level. And then I, if I can certify that you know the grammar at a rudimentary level, and I trust that you can handle yourself in these situations and explain yourself, I'll certainly help you create document contract postal vessel court venues. But you first must establish a baseline of rudimentary grammar knowledge. Bottom line, I say it ad nauseum again and again and again and again till I'm blue in the face. Learn the grammar first. Grammar comes first. Next comment it comes from TikTok, and they say it's Rodolfo Martinez, and they say solar flares and all that, it's nothing but a big lie. The climate change, it's a lie. They're making all this up to make change, nothing else. Oh, I posted a little clip on TikTok of that correct sentence structure video where I'm talking about how to create a correct sentence structure, and I was using the sun as an example of a tangible contract word and the heat and all that stuff. And so they say this. And uh, my coolie on her back was, does that have anything to do with correct sentence structure communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? And this happens all the time on TikTok. People just come out of the blue and talk about solar flares, climate change, God, Jesus, holy wars, soldiers of God, reptilian aliens. I mean, TikTok is a mighty strange place. Very entertaining, though. Very entertaining. So the final comment I'd like to address comes from Mac One Juno, and they said, "Why the other people, also RJG, will not stop and correct? Because it voids all prior contract performances, causing void status and standing." Um, oh, I see. They're answering the question: Why won't people like Russell J. Gould stop and correct? And they're saying because it voids all prior contract performances, causing void status and standing. Well, here's the thing, Mac One Juno. There is no status or standing because it's incorrect. It, there's no status and standing anyways. The only status and standing that RJG has is what you choose to give him. That's it. Because he certainly can't hold any status by himself, in and of himself, because he doesn't use correct grammar. Um, and what you're saying is it voids all prior contract performances. Well, they're already void. But, I mean, I see what you're saying, but you, I ask that you see what I'm saying. It's void anyways. So, what's who cares, right? If your volition is to be correct and use correct grammar, then there is no question as to what the next step would be. And then it says, furthermore, maintaining voidable corruptions keeps the door open to future voidance by a knowledgeable person of malevolent purpose. Furthermore, maintaining voidable corruptions. Is this guy suggesting that Russell J. Gould is maintaining corruption? It, that's what it sounds like. Okay, this guy is saying that Russell J. Gould is maintaining corruption. <laughs> that he is, Russell J. Gould is purposefully corrupt that's what they're saying and being corrupt and maintaining corruption keeps the door open to future avoidance by knowledgeable per person of malevolent purpose so i think they're saying i think they're saying that russell j gould is a malevolent has a malevolent purpose which may or may not be true i don't know um i'm not one to guess about something like that I'm just looking at what facts are on the table, and the facts are on the table are these. Russell J. Gould does not use correct grammar. He does not use a correct grammar flag, and he won't stop and correct. That's really all there is to say about that in my mind. 
I mean, we can speculate things like that. It's fun to speculate things like that. The fact remains. The only position that he holds is the one that you give him. No one else gives him a position. He has absolutely, positively zero effect in the fiction system. No discernible effect, anyways, that anybody's seen. I mean, if he's been at this for how many years now, have things gotten better? <laughs> no, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, again, at the risk of becoming blue in the face, I think the way to get things in life for your own self and your own biospheres to be better more positive performance is to do it yourself. Don't rely on someone else. Don't join a cult. Don't join a club. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you a suggestion. Don't join a club. Do it yourself. Become your own authority. Become autonomous. Okay? There's a such thing. There, there's two things going on here in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, domain. You have authoritarianism which is just like the fiction system, it's an authoritarian system, a chain of command, just like religion, so on and so forth, and there's autonomy. Where you are your own authority, your own author, you're autonomous, you don't rely and depend on anyone else, you don't bow down to anybody, you don't need anyone's permission to do anything because you follow one rule, in the fiction it would be called do no harm. You follow the three principles, the maintenance of the rule, one rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality. And that's how you navigate. Those are the two things. And also Mark Lowercase K also participates with authoritarian uh, authoritarianism where he is the be all end all in his construct. He's the judge. He makes the final decision about who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. All right. He decides whose name gets shamed. Again, these people like Russell, characters like Russell J. Gould and Mark Sean Christopher, the only power or position that they have is what you give them. By putting money in their pockets or by sharing their work or participating with any of the malarkey, the balderdash that uh, they put out there. So, again, it's a choice, you know contract is by consent and if that's what you choose to do that's what you choose to do there's plenty of room for everybody i choose a different route if you also choose a different route if you choose the route of uh, autonomy you can definitely do that through this youtube channel over 600 videos to learn from or that about does it for this one thank you very much for watching if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.